This video is to help you study for your midterm exam. It will be a SimNet project, just like you've done in your homework. You're going to download your set of instructions, your Excel spreadsheet, and then you'll go ahead and edit it based on your set of instructions and you will upload and self grade. Now, the first thing, three things that you will do on this exam is insert name and move a worksheet. So let's talk about a worksheet and I'll move over to one of your homework assignments. Now remember, um, homework assignment one four, if you look at this, remember when you save an Excel spreadsheet, it's a file, but it's actually a workbook. And inside your workbook, you can have multiple worksheets. So if you look down at the bottom left-hand corner, you'll notice that we have two worksheets. We have one named as January and one named as February. And what we did to create our February worksheet, we right-clicked over top of January and we used our shortcut menu and we selected the command move or copy and we moved it to the end so we moved it to the end and we checked this box we want to create a copy meaning we're going to copy all of the formatting and then we select OK and then you can see here's the copy of it they put a, a two in parentheses to show you that's the copy of January and if you double click over top of it you can rename it by typing a name and then you press enter and it will accept the change now um, when you right click there's a menu options but it's also on your home tab under this format sub menu and you can see here are some of the commands for that we also applied a tab color but if you notice in our set of instructions it doesn't look like you're going to be responsible for that on your midterm exam so so far all we did was um, we moved a worksheet or we copied but we didn't actually move now if we're going to move it we named it and I'll show you how to insert and, and move it around. So if we were to move it around, you want to use a click and drag approach. So I'm going to hover over top of March, hold down my mouse pointer, and I'm going to watch that little black bottom arrow in this little piece of paper and I'm going to release and you can see it repositions itself. So you're going to use a click on it, hold down your mouse pointer, and then release your mouse pointer to reposition that actual worksheet. If you just click right on the plus sign, that will give you a brand new blank worksheet and you can double click over top of it and you can rename it and press enter. Now let's go back and see what else. So that's insert, name, and move. Now if we're going to enter and edit information, so let's go back to something and work on that. So to enter anything, you just click on the cell and you actually just type the numbers and you press enter. So you can use your keyboard or the check mark here acts as an enter key and that will enter that information. Now if you want to edit it, you just double click on the cell and then you just make your change, whether you're deleting, um, adding new numbers, and you can also edit within the cell or you could go up to the formula bar and keep typing. But just make sure you press enter to accept the change. Let's see what else we have. All right, so applying a cell style and then merge and center across cells and shall see. Okay, so let's just start with a cell style. So going back, remember if you can see there's, I'm going to turn that off so I can show you. So classic gardens. Um, so let me clear all the formats. So this is typically what it will look like when you're done typing it. If you're going to merge and center, what you need to do is highlight the range with your white cross you highlight the range whatever your instructions instruct you to do so this range we're going to select is from a to h in the first row when you're working with these titles you only can do one row at a time so a1 to h1 once i highlight it then on the home tab i just click on the merge and center button and it will merge and center now to apply a style that's this gallery here. You have to open up the drop down list. And most of the styles that we've applied in our homework assignments would be heading one, two, three, four, the title style or the total style. So I'm going to apply the title style. Now you can see that it's blue. Um, I'm sure they had changed the font color. I'm not sure which one. I'll just grab that one. That's 25%. I can't remember the original. But let's go back and see what they want you to do. So that was merge and center. 
um, apply a cell style that's the drop down list now if we're going to add some shading and a font color so going back to this example so just remember if you're going to change a font color that's this command button always hover over top and pause for a second so you know whether you have the correct command button or not and if I click on the arrow that will give me the drop down list now the color is the first row but when you go down into that column to these different rows these are the percentages of that color so this is 80 percent of olive green that's 60 percent and this goes down and so forth and so on and like this one is at 25 percent so pay attention to if there's a percentage associated with it make sure you're going down in this column and you're selecting the correct one now if they want a fill that would be right here so this would be your fill color I always call that the bucket so when you're filling the color just pay attention to the color and you can see what it does it'll fill that cell but it's only going to fill whatever you highlight if I highlight this range and I apply this then you can see how that's all been filled so the system is not going to know where to apply the change until you highlight a region and then apply the command let's go back to so we have bold formatting and number formatting so bold formatting I think most of us are pretty familiar with that as you can see this is all in bold emphasis when you it's like a light switch you can see it's grayed out if you turn it off it will go back to its normal appearance if you click on the B for bold it will apply apply a darker appearance to your text um, so the other one that we need to be familiar with is uh, number formatting so number formatting I'll go back to January so you can see these numbers here you can see the bottom row has dollar symbols associated with them so and these have commas so there's three things that you can do with these numbers you can either apply this one would be your and make sure you pause with your mouse pointer this one's a counting number format now you can see we have those extra zeros so we could always go over here and decrease our decimals that way it's rounding up when we don't have a point zero zero anything this is a comma style so if I was to take all the formatting off of this particular row so I'll go to clear formats so it defaults back to the beginning and if you click on this comma style it will include a comma for the thousandths place and again I'm going to decrease the decimals so that will give you the comma without the dollar symbol but also if you click on this this will give you a drop down list if you're ever confused between the accounting and currency style just use your drop down list and apply it but the currency is the same thing as accounting uh, let me just go ahead and decrease that the difference between these two you can see the accounting style has a big white gap between the dollar symbol and the number where the currency style puts the dollar symbol right on top of the number that's just a difference between the two different styles so that would be formatting your numbers going back to auto fit the columns so let's take a look at that and you can see here there's apply column width over here so let's explore that so anytime that you take your mouse pointer in between so say I want to auto fit a so maybe it's just like all the way out here so auto fit means that we will get rid of all this excess white spacing so you take your mouse pointer and you convert it in between these two there's the border in between a and b and if you double click it it will auto fit there's another way of doing it. if you just click on the a and make sure you're on the home tab and if you go to this format drop down list you'll see here's the command right there in the menu auto fit the column width so another thing we can do and this applies to the rows too the same concept you know you just double click and it will auto fit um, now if you want to change the um, size of it you can use a click and drag and look at the first number not the one in the parentheses for the pixels to change the width or some of you may choose to go over here and click on column width and actually type in the number for the size of the width of the column you type it in and then you select OK and it will change the width so you're either in your um, exam you're going to either be doing one of several things maybe auto fit in a column or auto fit in a height or you might have to open up the dialog box and then actually apply the height or the column but just remember the system's not going to know what to change until you actually highlight it and highlighting would be up in this region for your columns 
and over to the left will be associated to your row numbers. You can do one or multiple at a time. Just read your set of instructions and it'll let you know what you need to do. All right, um, I only have 15 minutes per recording and we're already at 10, so there might be a part two to this review. Okay, so we took care of Emergent Center, cell shading, you know, just filling in colors, font colors. Uh, we took a bold formatting, number formatting, auto fit a column with. All right, let's go ahead and now work on our sum function and how to use this auto fill button. So let's go back to that same example. So we had totals here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those out so I can show you. So we position ourselves where we want our answer. So if we're going to add all four of these weeks for the apparel, we want our answer to display here. So we activate our cell where we want to display our answer. And you can do one or two things. You can either start typing out the equal sign and the word sum. And when you see it populate below, you can double click on it to go into that function mode. Or you could just go... Um, on a formulas tab, you can see here's a shortcut button right here, the sum. If you click on it, you can see it automatically self-populates and it already collects the correct range from B4 to E4. If it doesn't, you just would click on it. So let me double click. So if it didn't, all you had to do is just override it and click and drag and it will self-populate that information. You can check mark it to enter it or you can press enter on your keyboard either way. But once you're done that, so I'm going to blow this up so you can see it. So make sure that you hover over top of the green square at the bottom right hand corner and you convert that mouse pointer to that black cross. And when you do, you double click and you can see it will copy it all the way down so that you could either double click or you could use the approach where you can just click and drag and pull it down, whatever you're comfortable with. And it will copy that formula down. All right, let's take a look at the next thing. So that was your sum function and your autofill. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I think, um, I only have a couple more minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this average max and min on this video, and then we'll move over to go over to the charting. Now, if we were gonna use something other than the sum function, if we wanted to use the max function, all we have to do, again, is we position ourselves. We go over to the shortcut menu and we're going to select the max. Now we don't want the total included, so we don't want it to stop at F. We want it to stop at E. So I just went over top of my mouse pointer and held down, held, hold, held down the pointer, excuse me, and it updated this. Or what you could have just did was backed out, backspaced F out and typed in E to make sure it stopped at week four. So what that function is going to do, it's going to evaluate all four of those numbers and it's going to return the highest number. And the same thing, if you double click, it will copy this formula down and of these four weeks, it will return the highest number. Now you just repeat that for the same thing when we look, let's see what else they want us to do, an average, a max, and a min. So the same thing will apply when we're working on, um, sorry about the phone, so we'll do the same thing and let me get over to the correct worksheet. So the same thing whenever we're working on our min command. I typed out a couple quick titles. So I'm going to position myself, go up here and select the min. And again, you're not going to select all of that. It sh the range should stop at E. So you could easily just backspace that out and type in E and press enter. Make sure you're not including these. And then I'm just going to double click to copy that down. And what it's doing is it's grabbing the lowest number of those four. And now it's going to average them out. Now I'm going to select average. And again, the range should stop at E, not including the rest of the cells. I make the change, press enter, I go back and I double click over top of that green square in the bottom right hand corner. And I copied it down. You can see it copied down the dollar symbol. So I'm just gonna highlight all that stuff and I'm just gonna go back to the home tab and click on the comma and it will convert its style. And then we just go ahead and uh, get rid of those points after the decibel. Okay, so I want to move on to a part two for this review.